hello so we solve a question from wasi um private candidate 2012 question number seven so we look at the 7a it says that the length of the size of a triangle uh in the ratio 7 is to 9 is to 9. calculate correct to the nearest degree the angle between the equal size and the b also says that the angle of elevation of the top of a building from the top of a vertical pole is 30 degrees the pole is 2 meters high and its foot is 12 meters from that of the building. Find correct to two decimal places the I, height of the building, II, angle of depression of the foot of the pole from the top of the building, and III, angle of elevation of the top of the pole from the foot of the building. So the first one we do is the 7A. And it says that, so we take the 7A again. It says that the length of the size of a triangle, so here we are talking about triangle uh in the ratio seven is to nine is to nine calculate correct to the nearest degree the angle between the equal size so i'm going to draw a triangle here and i'm going to show you what is happening here so there is a triangle the triangle is the plane figure that has got three sides and three angles and if you look at the ratio that we have here we are told that the ratio of the length of the triangle is 7 is to 9 is to 9 and these are the lengths of the triangle you know the lengths are measured in uh, let me say uh, meters it could be a uh, centimeters anything else but when we talk about ratio uh, ratio has no unit so these are the basic uh, units of the triangle so this tells us that if we assume that the triangle or the length of the triangle is in centimeters, let's say um, here is seven centimeters, then there could be nine centimeters, and here would also be nine centimeters. So, um, per the ratio that we have over here, it tells us that the triangle is a type of triangle called isosceles triangle. That is a triangle that has got two of its sides and angles equal. So we know that these two sides of the triangle are equal because if you look at the ratio of the lengths, these two sides are 9 and 9. Now let us label our triangle so that we can better understand it. So let here be A, B, and let there be C. Okay, so I'm going to show you two ways that you can solve this. Now the first way that we can solve this is that when you are dealing with isosceles triangle, uh, because we are told that these two sides are equal. Now, the question says that we have to calculate the angle between the equal sides. So, these are the equal sides. So, of course, um, this is the angle that exists between these two equal sides. So, let us call the angle, um, say, um, let me use anything here, theta. All right, let's call this angle uh, theta here. So what is the value of theta? That is, what is the value of the angle that exists between the sides that are equal? Now, because these two sides are equal, we can divide the triangle into two equal parts. We can draw a vertical line that is from the point C straight down to the line AB. And this vertical line will make an angle of 90 degrees with this line because of the fact that the two sides are equal. So we can divide it this way. So that means we can have two right angle triangles from this isosceles triangle, you know. Right angle triangle is a triangle that has got one of its interior angles to be 90 degrees. So now, um, let me, you know, label this part, let's call it C, M, to mean the middle of the line AB. So I can pick this half right angle triangle and look at it well. So we have two right angle triangles so i am picking the right side and it looks like this we have b here and we have c here and here is m okay so um the whole of this angle was uh, theta and now we have divided it into two so that is what i'm going to do i'm going to give another name to this um, angle let me call this angle alpha so what it means is that um you know the theta is now equal to twice the alpha because uh, I'm I am saying that the whole of this is what uh, theta so that means this half here is alpha 
and the remaining half here too is alpha so that means that twice alpha gives you the theta that we have over here now we know that the length from b to c is nine centimeters so here is nine centimeters and if from a to b is seven centimeters but from m to b is half of a to b then of course from m to b will be 3.5 centimeters yeah because of the fact that from a to b is seven centimeters now you know we have these two um lengths we know the length bc then we know the length mb and we don't know this angle of course that is the angle that we want to find we want to find this angle if we can find this angle if we can find the angle alpha of course we can find theta which is the angle between the two sides that are equal because theta is equal to 2 times the alpha i want us to um, look at something here now um to find the angle here i have to use one of the trigonometric ratios you know we are dealing with trigonometry trigonometry so we are dealing with the measurement of uh, uh triangles that is the size and angles of a triangle and when i talk about the trigonometric ratios uh you know i say ratio and here we are of course talking about the ratio of the length of a triangle we are talking about these three things we are talking about sine which we abbreviated and call it sin or um, we still say sine but we write it like this as iron we are talking about cosine which we normally say cos for short then we are talking about tangent which we normally say tan for short all right so i'm just going to explain these things briefly you know i have a video on all these uh, trigonometric um, ratios i've explained them in depth but here i'm going to explain them briefly now these trigonometric ratios kind of connect it connects the angle in a triangle that is in the right angle triangle of course to the lengths or the size of the triangle all right so what i'm going to do right now is that i'm going to draw a very simple right angle triangle and then we will use this to explain what i'm talking about here so let this be a right angle triangle so that is the 90 degrees angle of the size a here b and c now let me put an angle here let's here say the angle here is um let me call it alpha and let me call the angle here beta now if you look at this right angle triangle this side that is the side from ac is called hypotenuse now this side is always the longest side and more importantly it is the side that is always opposite to the 90 degrees angle so you can see that this hypotenuse thing that is the ac the length ac or the side ac faces the angle 90 degrees now we have other two sides we have these sides the side bc and a side ab these two sides don't have names the, i mean normally uh students say you know they call one side opposite and they call the other side adjacent but that is wrong these two sides do not have names we don't even just say opposite opposite to what we don't just say adjacent adjacent to what so these two sides don't have names depending on the angle that you are talking about they you know acquire their names so their names keep interchanging all their names interchange and because of that it's very dangerous to call this side the opposite side and the other adjacent or vice versa example if i am talking about the angle theta or sorry the angle alpha if i am talking about the angle alpha to the angle alpha you can see that the angle alpha is here and it is facing this side so to the angle alpha this side bc the side bc that is the length bc is the opposite side it is the opposite side because it is the side opposite to the angle alpha so we can call the side opposite now opposite to what opposite to the angle alpha so to the angle alpha this side becomes the opposite and of course if you know the opposite side to the angle alpha then the remaining side automatically becomes the adjacent which is this side so this side becomes adjacent to the angle alpha so to the angle alpha a b the length a b is the adjacent side 
now let's see what happens if we talk about the angle beta here that is the angle up here now the moment we talk about the angle beta something will happen angle beta when we say the angle beta you will see that the angle beta up here if something is on top of course it will be facing something down so the angle beta is rather facing the length a b so to the angle beta the side that is opposite the side a b now becomes the opposite side you see because it is now facing down here so to the angle alpha a b is adjacent side but to the angle beta this a b rather becomes the opposite side so you see it is interchanging and that is why it is very dangerous to think that this side that is the vertical side is always opposite that is not true all right and uh, this sign cos tan you know um the link um any of these angles the size for example let us talk about the sign normally we remember these things um using a mnemonic we call it sukatua sukatua yeah and that is very simple the s here stands for sine and the c here means cosine or cos and it is tangent or tan so i mean you just don't say sine you say sine then you add an angle sine of what sine alpha sine theta sine beta sine 30 sine 60 so sine of the angle and cos of the angle tan of the angle all right so the two things that you see here are size of the triangle so the trigonometry these trigonometric ratios that is a sine cosine tangent they kind of take the angle and convert it to the size or they they serve as a link between the angle and the size of the triangle now if you know what we call pythagoras theorem you realize that pythagoras deals with only size that is for a right angle triangle the side of the hypotenuse sorry the square of the side of the hypotenuse is equal to the sum of the squares of the other two sides but trigonometry does something beyond this size trigonometry is very beautiful it kind of links the angle to the size so let us go back to our triangle here and I'm gonna show you something now if I write something like sine alpha you see sine of the angle alpha I am talking about this um, right angle triangle that we see here that is ABC here sine alpha that is alpha so sine is so so means oh means the opposite side that is the opposite to the angle alpha the opposite side divided by the high polynos so sine alpha is the opposite side opposite side divided by the hypotenuse and what is the opposite side to the sine alpha it is the side bc so we have bc over the hypotenuse that is ac so that is that as simple as that and the uh, uh, cause is adjacent of a hypotenuse so if i write cause say alpha then i have to look at the adjacent side to alpha and to alpha this side is the adjacent that is the side a b so i will have something like a b over the hypotenuse that is a c so like i said i have um something on the trigonometric ratios it is very in-depth so i'm going to go uh forward so that we solve this question so if you are interested you check my other video on trigonometry i talked about the sine the cosine the tangent how to recognize these things uh in a right angle triangle and how to link the angles to the size so that is very very beautiful you can uh check it i talked about it in that video i explain what we mean by trigonometry and how to link this side so now i'm going to find this angle so what i'm gonna do is that you know there is the right angle triangle mbc and you know it has uh, three angles one is here one is there one is here uh, there is the 90 degrees angle of course this side the side bc is the hypotenuse because it is the longest side as you can see and most importantly 
it is the side that is facing this 90 degrees angle so first we know that the hypotenuse is the side bc and of course we have these two sides one should be the opposite side and one should be the adjacent but which one is the opposite side opposite to what what angle are we talking about we are talking about the angle alpha but the angle alpha is up here when the angle is up there the opposite side becomes the side down because something up will of course be facing something down so this side is the opposite side and that automatically makes the side adjacent when something is adjacent it is near and of course if you look at this side the it adjoins kind of uh, near to this angle because it forms part of uh, the lines that form this angle alpha so um how can i find this angle uh there's the hypotenuse bc that is what i know the bc the length of the bc is nine centimeters and of course i know 3.5 centimeters but what is this length what is this side to this angle alpha that i am finding this side is the opposite side so that means that i also know the side opposite to the angle i'm finding that is the length or the side mb and that is 3.5 centimeters so i have h and o o h so let me look at um the mnemonic that we use to remind ourselves we call it socatoa and then if you look at the socatoa where we have the o h occurring is the first one that is the so you see the o h here so of course i have to deal with it using sign all right so i'm gonna write um sign of the angle that i'm finding that is the sine alpha is equal to the opposite side which is the length mb divided by the hypotenuse side which is the length bc okay so the length mb is 3.5 um and the length uh, bc is 9. you might be wondering why i didn't add centimeters even if I add centimeters, you are going to cancel. So it is not necessary because I'm dealing with ratios. All right. So let's go on here. So I'm going to find the angle alpha. And that's how I can do that. So I have sine alpha to be equal to 3.5 divided by 9. And if I have to find alpha, then I have to find sine inverse of both sides. And I'm going to get something like this. So alpha is equal to sine inverse of 3.5 divided by 9. And from here, I'm going to pull on my calculator. All right, so that is my calculator. And first, I have to make sure that it is clear. There is nothing here. I see D and math only. And I'm going to type sine inverse of 3.5 divided by 9. So you press on the shift first and you see S here. Then you press on the sign so that you have sine inverse. Then you um, press 3.5. Then you press the division sign here. And you have 9. Then you leave. You go to the right and you close your brackets nicely. And you press on the equal sign. So you have... 22.885 let's leave it there 22.885 degrees is this angle so i'm going to have um 22.885 degrees so that is the angle here and I am finding the angle between the two sides and that is theta and we have established first that theta is equal to twice alpha so we can say therefore theta degrees which is the angle between the two equal sides which is 2 alpha is going to be 2 times 22.885 and let me pull on the calculator again to look at what this is all right, so let me say times two and equal to 45.77. All right, so I'm having um, 45.77 degrees. But in a question, what am I told? I'm told that I have to convert it to the nearest degree.
so to the nearest degree of course that is going to be 46 degrees all right and let me also remind you that the calculator can even convert it to the nearest degree for you so all that you have to do is that you press shift mode then you get into the setup then you go to fix six and of course to the nearest degree that it's how many decimal points do you want there is no decimal point i don't want any decimal points so zero then i have 46 so that is 46 degrees so this is the angle that exists between their two sides that are equal all right and we want to look at a second way that we can solve this question so that is the easiest way that you can do this it's pretty pretty simple and there uh, let's look at another way that you can do this all right so there is an alternative approach and this approach will be a little bit involving so i urge you to use the first one though i want to talk about this too because that is the beauty of mathematics you can you know use several approaches to solve one question so now there is the triangle and we are told that the um ratio of the length of the size is seven is to nine is to nine so let's put the seven here and let's put nine and nine there okay so we are told to find the angle in between this but first we have to recognize that there is an isosceles triangle because these two sides are equal so what i'm going to do is that i'm going to give the same angles to these two sides let me call this angle x degrees if here is x and of course here too will be x because these two angles are equal because of the fact that their size are also equal and of course this will be a different angle so let me call it angle y degrees all right so there is the second way that i want to solve this i want to give some hypothetical angles to this um uh, to this uh, triangle okay so from here i can write this uh let me talk about this sum of interior angles of a triangle sum of interior angles of a triangle is 180 degrees so this implies that i can write x plus x plus y is equal to 180 x plus x is 2x plus y is equal to 180 let me call this equation one now what i'm trying to do here is that i'm trying to establish two equations because i have two variables that is x and y i'm trying to find two equations so that i can solve the two variables simultaneously and if i can find the value of y then that is the angle that exists between these two sides that are equal so i've been able to establish i'm able to establish one equation let me go to the second one now because i know these uh three sides i can use a rule that we call the sine rule the sine rule um is very very simple you know one thing that you can realize or recognize about the triangle is that the size um correspond to the angles that is the bigger the angle the bigger the side so uh, let me write something here using the sine rule and of course i have also talked about the sine rule in one of my videos so you can watch that to understand what we mean by the sine rule but let me try to explain it briefly here now when we have a triangle like this okay and let's say we have uh, this angle to be say a degrees this is angle b that is angle c let's give you know uh, length to this let me call this uh, x centimeters let me call here y centimeters let me call here z centimeters now these are angles here a b c and these are length here now the sine rule says that if i take the sine of any of these angles example if i take the sine of the angle a the ratio of this uh the ratio of the sine of this angle a to the side that faces angle a and the side is z is equal to the sine of um, another angle say b divided by the side that also faces b and that is the side y and that is also the same as taking the sine of the third angle c over 
the side that faces C, that is X. So that is basically what we call the sine rule. So I'm going to use the sine rule to establish another equation here so that I can solve the two simultaneously. And I'm going to do a little bit of sine expansion. That is trigonometric ratio expansions here. So let me look at this triangle here. Now, um, I have two X's here, so I'm going to take just one X, then I'll take one Y because of course the two X will give me the same thing. So the first thing is I'm going to write sine of the angle X, sine X. So this angle X, you know, faces this side, that is the side BC has nine. So the sine of the angle X divided by the length of the side nine is equal to the sine of the angle Y, okay, which faces the side AB, which has a length of seven centimeters, sine of angle Y over seven. All right, so I have now been able to establish another equation. So equation um, two here. So let me call this equation two, okay. So that is one and that is two. So what I'm gonna write here is that I'm going to say put equation one, um, let me first, you know, make something in the subjects here because so here equation one, I want to eliminate the Y so that I, I find the X first, because if you look at this, it's pretty, pretty easy to make Y the subject from equation one. So the first thing I'll say or do here is that I'll say make Y the subject, make Y the subject in equation one. Now that is equation one. Equation one is two x plus y equals one hundred and eighty. So y is equal to one eighty minus two x. Okay. So let me give you a name to this. Should I call it equation three? Okay. Equation star won't be bad. So now I'll put equation star um into the equation two. All right. So this is my equation two. Um. That is my equation two. Okay. All right. So let me put star into equation two here. So I'm going to have sine x. All right. Over nine. Oh, divided by nine. But where I have sine y, I'm going to write sine. The y is now 180 minus 2x. So I'm going to put 180 minus 2x here divided by the seven. Right now I have xx here, so the expansion is going to be pretty, pretty easy. Um, first, let me do cross multiplication. So I'm going to have seven multiplying sine x. I'm going to have seven sine x here and nine multiplying this. I'm going to have nine times sine 180 minus two x. All right, so that is pretty simple here. All right, so the next thing we do is that we have to be able to expand the sine of 180 minus 2x. So let's see how we do that. Um, now let us look at this. If I have sine, say sine A plus B, that is expanded as sine of the A, then cos of the B, then I'll bring the plus sign. After that, I will exchange it and write sine. This time around, I will not say A, I'll say B, then I'll say cos of the A. In the same vein, if I have something like sine A minus B, I'll say sine of the A, I'll say cos of the B, and because the sine here is minus, I'll have the minus here. But the second thing I'll do here is that I'll interchange, I'll not say sine A again, I'll say sine B, then I'll have cos A. So now let's see how we expand this. We are going to have seven sine X here, then nine here, so let me, bring the nine out. So the sine, we are going to have sine 180 first. Then we have cos 2x. Then we bring our minus. Then we now interchange it and say sine um, 2x now. Then we say cos 180. So that's how we expand this. All right, let's go on from here. We have seven sine x and then nine let us simplify this so what is sine 180 let us check it and see so let me pull on my calculator and type sine 180 so i have sine 180 here okay 
all right sine 180 is zero so that makes the whole of this term zero if this is zero it will make the whole of the zero so i will have zero i have minus sine 2x and what is cos 180 cos 180 is negative one let me verify it and see so i have cos 180 all right that is negative one so cos 182 is negative one so this is negative oh sorry negative one okay negative one all right so that is that so i'm going to have seven sine x the nice out here so i'm having i have negative sine two x times negative one so that will be positive sine two x so that is what i have now here i have a double angle and let me try to expand this for you to see very very well now if i have sine two x sine two x is the same as sine x plus x and if i'm going to expand sine of the sum of an angle as i did here right so that is going to be sine x cos x and here i have plus so i say plus then i will interchange but it's the same term so i'll still have sine x cos x all right these two are like terms so i'm going to have two of this sine x cos x so that is what i'm going to have here okay so let me come down here and i'll have seven sine x equals nine and the whole of this will give me two sine x cos x all right so i'm going to have seven sine x equals nine times two is 18. so i have 18 sine x cos x all right so i can do some constellations here you know i have sine x here i have sine x there so sine x i can divide through by sine x so that sine x will cancel sine x then i'll have 7 equals 18 cos x and if i want to find x first the 18 must leave so i'll divide both sides by 18 and i'm going to have something like this okay so let me continue here i will have cos x to be equal to 7 out of 18 and if i want to find x then i have to take cos inverse of both sides and that is going to be something like this cos inverse of error 7 out of 18 so x is going to be this now let me pull out my calculator and uh, i'm going to type cos inverse so first okay let me uh clear this thing from there i have fix here so let me take out the fix okay all right we are good to go so let me type shift cos so cos inverse of 7 out of 18 7 out of 18 okay then you press on the equal sign and i have 67.114 all right so let me write it down so to three let me see 67.115 okay so this is what i'm having here i'm having 67.11 let me see five uh but because we are talking about whole numbers whole numbers let me leave this to 67 degrees all right so the value of x x is 67 and that is this angle but the question asks us to find y because it says find correct to the nearest degree the angle between the equal sides and the angle between the equal sides is y so let us find y that is y y is 180 minus 2x all right so we have to put this into equation star so let's do that now so let me do that here so put x equals 67 in equation star equation star says that y is equal to 180 minus 2x so we have 180 minus 2 times 67 all right so what is that okay let me do the calculation again so i have 180 minus 2 times 67 and we should be having 46 ah yeah we are there 46 degrees and that is the angle that is between the two 
equal size so this gives us 46 degrees so you can see that there is a relatively difficult approach to find the angle between the two sides the first one is pretty much simple but those who do further mathematics or elective mathematics would want to show something and um, there are several ways you know to the one true god as some people say so this is the solution the alternative solution to the question 7a we move on to the 7b 7b says that the angle of elevation of the top of a building from the top of a vertical pole is 30 degrees the pole is 2 meters high and it's for this 12 meters from that of the building find correct two decimal places the height of the building the angle of depression of the foot of the pole from the top of the building and iii says the angle of elevation of the top of the building from the foot of the building now that is application of trigonometry we are talking about elevation and depression so the key words here are elevation and then we see depression here all right when we say to elevate it means to lift and when you say to depress that is to bring down um the english language has several meanings for the word depressed when somebody is depressed the person is sad and of course when something is sad it kind of softens it comes down you know oh i was so down he was so down he was so sad he was so depressed so when we talk about the angle of depression we are talking about the angle that we cover when we uh you know bring our head or our eye level down so first before we go on Anytime you hear of angle of elevation, let me write it down. Angle of elevation or the angle of depression. We must first be looking at what we call the eye level. Or let me put it this way, the horizontal eye level. Now, before somebody can even lift his head, you know i mean before you you can know that somebody has even lifted his head you would have to know where you know the normal position of the head or the eye was so let us assume that you know i'm not a good artist so let us assume that we have somebody here something like that you know okay so we have a person here i'm trying to do some art here okay all right so i think that is okay now let this be the eye of this person so let's draw an eye here okay it's a big eye because i'm very interested in the eye not the hair okay so let me give it some light all right now this person has not lifted the eye so the person when looking straight that is the eye level that is the eye level of the person so anytime that you t you are talking about angle of elevation and depression that is the first thing you have to think about the eye level and um always the eye level is horizontal as you can see it is a horizontal line so we say the horizontal eye level so if this person lifts the eye it will go up this way to look at something at the top now the angle from this horizontal eye level that is when the person had not lifted the eye to the top is what we call the angle of elevation so the person has elevated the eye so we call it the angle of elevation now if this person also bows down his head and the eye comes down to look at something down here now the angle between this horizontal eye level to the point down that he looked down is what we call the angle of depression so the person has uh, depressed his um, eye level years so that is what we call the angle of depression and angle of elevation so the question that we have here that is the 7b what we must always be doing first is to first locate the horizontal eye level if we do not locate it we can hardly calculate the angle of elevation or the angle of depression we must first know where the eye level was before it was lifted or it was uh thrown down all right so with this little explanation let us begin to solve our question so the first thing we're going to do is to draw the diagram of this and we have to be very careful we have to understand what is expected of us now the angle of elevation of the top 
so you see that when it says elevation you see the keyword top because when we lift it from the horizontal eye level we are going top we are going to see something up there so the angle of elevation of the top of a building so you are lifting your eye from the horizontal eye level to see the top of a certain building from where from the top of a vertical pole well we have talked about two things here let us try to analyze it first we have talked about a building so we have building here then we have a vertical pole okay um that is what i'm going to do so let this be um let me let me draw a straight line here. so that is the vertical pole and of course let me uh, draw something here there is a horizontal line so there is uh, should I say the flat surface? So that is the surface. The flat surface that is the land. And there is a pole. So there is a pole. We have it on the land. So there is the pole. Um, okay, pole here. And then let us look at the question very well. It says that the angle of elevation of the top of a building. So from the top of a vertical pole. So it means that from the top of this vertical pole, the eye is here the eye now let me put the eye here okay so there is the eye it means the eye is at the top of this vertical pole so because we are lifting the eye from the top of the vertical pole so uh, because of that we have to draw the horizontal eye level so now that is the eye level now Look at the question very well. The angle of elevation of the top. It means that we are lifting our eye to see the top of a certain building. The building has not been drawn yet. But from where? From the top of a vertical pole. So from the source, we have to locate the eye level from the source. All right. So we can go on to draw our uh, building now. Because we are lifting our eye to see the top of the building, the building will be taller than the pole. You know, there is simple logic you have to understand this i have problems drawing straight lines all right let me try uh there is no better let me straighten here up a little bit okay mm -hmm. ah, i'll take it like that all right so this let let here be the top of the building so this is the building so it says that the angle of elevation of the top of the building from the top of a vertical pole is 30. So um, this is the eye level that is the top of the pole. So we lift the eye to look at the top of the building and the angle between the horizontal eye level to the top of this building is what we call the angle of elevation. And pair the question, we have 30 degrees as the angle of elevation. All right, so that is clear. So from here to this point, that is what we can draw the angle of elevation of the top of a building from the top of a vertical pole. So this is the building. And uh, let me write something here, building. There is no need to write this, but for clarification. So the red is the building, the blue is the pole. And let's see what happens again. The pole is two meters high, okay? So we know the height of the pole, so let me put it there. The pole is two meters so from here to down here is two meters the pole is two meters high and its foot is 12 meters from so the pole's foot is this that is the foot of the pole and its foot is two meters away or from that of the building so that is the foot of the building and this is the foot of the pole so between the building and the pole the distance is 12 meters all right so if from here today it is 12 meters then of course from here today to here will also be 12 meters it makes sense this forms a rectangle you know and if here to there there is a vertical line there is a horizontal line these are all horizontal lines horizontal horizontal vertical and vertical so if here is two meters two then this point here down here should also be two meters okay so find correct two decimal places the height of the building. So first we are to know the height of this building. That's from here down here. So the whole of this, let's call it H. That is the height of the building. 
it is what we are to find and then already we know you know parts of the height of the building that is from here down is two meters so let me give length to this let's here be x meters so that means that h is equal to x plus two meters all right so how do we find the height of the building that is i find the height of the building so to find the height of the building that is the height of the building h which is equal to x plus two meters so i have to know x and i can know the height of the building let me label my you know figure so that it becomes very easy to reference it i'm calling this point a this point b let me call this point c this point d and let me call this point e all right so the height of the building finding x x is found in the right angle triangle of course this is a right angle triangle because there is a horizontal line and there is a vertical line when a vertical line meets a horizontal line it forms an angle of 90 degrees making this right angle sorry making this triangle a right angle triangle that is the triangle c d e so i'm going to say that considering triangle i'm going to consider the triangle c d e all right so there is a triangle c d e let me draw it here properly so that you can see uh oh um my straight lines keep betraying me here okay so c d e okay so here's e here's c and there is d well that is better now okay so here is 30 degrees and here's x and here is 12. if you look at what we have here we have 12 x and that is that okay so once again because we are dealing with a right angle triangle we come to the socatoa that is the sign called tan and i've said that i have a video on this try and watch it it is very educative and informative so um the side that is the ed is the hypotenuse because it is the side opposite to the 90 degrees angle we are using the angle 30 of course we could also use the angle here which is 60 because the sum of the interior angles of a triangle is 180 so if here is 90 and 30 what is left here is 60. all right no need to go here let's use the angle uh, 30 that we have here okay so um to this angle 30 angle 30 faces this side so to this angle 30 this side that we are um solving or we are finding is opposite to the angle 30 so we say um we have an opposite side and we don't know the hypotenuse so that puts so and ka out of the equation because here we have h h and we don't know the h we don't know the hypotenuse so the only thing we can use here is the toa that is the tangent of course this side uh, 12 is adjacent to 30 if x is the opposite side then that leaves this side to be the adjacent side so we say tan of 30 degrees equals the opposite side x over the adjacent 12 so x will be 12 tan 30 so what is x so i'm going to pull up my calculator again and 30 i think that is root 3 over 3 and then i'll type the whole of this 12 and 30 and okay 4 root uh 3 but i'm dealing with decimal so you press sd then you convert it to that and it says leave it to two decimal places so i'm going to get 6.93 all right and if you want to use the calculator to convert it to decimal place, you press shift, then you press the mode, you come to setup fixed decimal place six, then you, you have two decimal place, and you go to SD, then you have 6.93. Okay, so let's go. So X is 6.93 uh, meters. So therefore, the height, which is X plus two is going to be 6.93 meters plus two meters which is equal to 8.93 meters so that is the height of the building converted to or corrected to two decimal places all right we go to ii and let's see what ii says 
II says you are to find the angle of depression of the foot of the pole. You know, angle of depression means we are now bowing our eye down. So we are bowing our eye down to see what? To see the foot of the pole, the angle of depression of the foot of the pole. So where is the foot of the pole? Okay, there is the pole. The blue vertical line is the pole and there is the foot of the pole. So we are bowing our head down to see this. But from where are we bowing our head? Let's see. The angle of depression of the foot of the pole from the top of the building. All right. So that means that we will be here. Our eye will be here. So now we have our eye here. And we are now going to bow down. So our eye is here. So the first thing I've been saying is that the first thing is that uh, you have to locate your eye level, horizontal level. Before you even bow your head down, you have to indicate your horizontal eye level. So that is my horizontal eye level from the top of the building. Okay, so that's my eye level here. And then I'm now going to lower my eye down. So I'll lower it down here. And I'm going to look at this foot of this building. Sorry, of the pole, the foot of the pole. So the angle I'm talking about here, from here to the point that I look at the foot of the building. So this angle is the angle of depression. The whole of this angle is the angle of depression. Because I depress my eye, uh, my angle from this point down here so and there is something that you have to pay attention here when you are dealing with trigonom trigonometry that is plain figures you will also be dealing with i mean some of the rules that deals with power lines of course that is plain geometry now you know that this pole is a vertical pole right and this building too is a vertical building so you should know that these two lines are power so um, should i continue if i continue this you can see that there is a line passing through these two vertical lines so this makes this line that is the line from a to d a transverse line or a transversa now there is this law that deals with power lines and if you have a line passing through two power lines then we see that the angle here alternates with the angle down here if we can draw something like a z then we see the angle here alternate with the angle here and in the same vein the angle here alternate with the angle there now look at what is happening here now that is a vertical line it's a straight line a building is straight it's not slanted so you can be sure that these two lines are parallel mm -hmm. so the angle here we can form a z here look at this we have one two three so the theta up there is the same as the theta down here yes if i want to find this theta then i can use this i can complete this plane figure and find theta but that will be a very long way to go um, because these two angles are equal i can equally use this right angle triangle of course there is a right angle triangle because the surface is horizontal or flat and there is a vertical line and when a vertical line and a horizontal line meet they form 90 degrees so now I know the height of the building that is, um, I think that is 8.93 meters and I know the line AB so I can find the angle theta. So let me, so now I'm considering the triangle ABD. Okay. So let me write something here. Considering triangle ABD. And let me draw it well for you to see. This is what I'm talking about. Uh, okay so there is the right angle triangle here is a b and up here is d and you can see that from b up to d is the whole of the h and that a is there uh 8.93 so here is 8.93 meters and a to b is 12 meters here we are finding the angle here of course we don't know the angle here is the angle here right theta the angle of depression up there is the same as the angle here. Now this side is the hypotenuse because it is the side opposite to the 90 degrees angle. And to the angle we are talking about that is theta, it faces the side. So it makes this the opposite side and there is the adjacent side. So we know the opposite side and we know the adjacent side. Now back to Sokatua, let's look at it again. Uh, if you look at it, 
again we don't know the hypotenuse so we are not going to use so or car and oa is even here so you can be sure that you are dealing with the tangent all right you could have as well used pythagoras to find the hypotenuse but that will be a waste of time all right tan theta degrees is opposite side which is 8.93 over the adjacent side which is 12 all right so meters meters will cancel out i have theta to be equal to tan inverse of 8.93 over 12 all right so theta is equal to let me pull up my calculator and i have tan inverse so i press shift tan tan inverse of 8.93 divided by 12 um and that is 36.655 so to two decimal places let me convert it to two decimal places that will be 36.66 all right so you can use the calculator to here shift mode then you choose six and you choose the two so that is 36.66 that will be to two decimal places so i'm going to have theta to be 36.66 degrees all right so we look at the third one it says that find the angle of elevation of the top of the pole from the foot of the building all right we back to elevation the angle of elevation of the top of the pole so that is the top of the pole my diagram is getting a little bit messy so let me use the yellow so that is the top of the pole so the angle of elevation so from this top of the pole we are looking at this top of the pole from where from the foot of the building so that is the foot of the building so it means we are looking at this angle the angle here so the angle of elevation of this top of the pole from the foot of the building okay so let me put some angle here i'm calling it angle alpha so we are going to consider this triangle the small one here we know the length or let me see we know the height of the pole so that is two here then we know the length from a to b 12. so we can consider the triangle a b e so we say considering triangle a b e okay so let me put a b there clearly for you to see so um a b e he has two meters and he has 12 meters and we are talking about this angle so to this angle alpha that is the opposite side and to this angle this is the adjacent side so we see tan all right of course we have opposite and adjacent we don't know the hypotenuse so now i'm very sure that you've gotten the hang of that so we say tan alpha is equal to the opposite two out of the adjacent 12 and uh, we have tan alpha to be equal to two here one and two there six so we have one out of six so we find alpha will be equal to tan inverse of one out of six so alpha will be equal to let me pull up my calculator here so i have tan inverse of one out of six and that is 9.46 degrees of course this has been converted to two decimal places let me um take off the fix and see what is happening here um let me reset it okay so i have tan inverse of one out of six okay i have 9.4623 and it goes on like that all right so to two decimal places of course shift mode fix then you choose two and we have 9.46 so alpha is going to be 9.46 degrees so this is the angle of depression from sorry the angle of elevation of the top of the pole from the foot of the building so that means you don't have to lift your head high to see the top of the pole from the foot of the building all right so that is how we solve this question I hope you enjoyed it don't forget to subscribe to the channel and hit the like button to like this video and help this video okay